I'm John Bidler. Uh, my firm specializes in, concentrates in the area of elder and disability law. And today I'd like to talk about uh, what I see as one of the main problems with elder law, and that is the misinformation that people receive uh, before they even come into the office. A lot of people mean well, some people don't mean so well, but they uh, proliferate a lot of information that just is, is very inaccurate when it comes to elder law. So many people come into the office and they are frightened from what they've heard. They've basically heard things like, you need to run around like a chicken with no head. It's probably too late. You probably can't do anything. Whatever situation you're in, uh, you're probably going to end up losing all of the assets of the person that you're concerned about. What I like to tell people when they come into the office is that they need to relax, uh, that it's probably going to be, it most definitely is going to be better than what they think. Um, the Medicaid laws as far as Medicaid are, um, are tricky, they're complicated, but if you know how to work the, the laws, then we can be successful in saving assets. Um, one of the things that people don't realize is that there are two types of Medicaid. There's institutional Medicaid, which is for the nursing home, and there's community Medicaid, which is for assistance to stay at home. The laws are very different for the two. For community Medicaid, there are no transfer penalties uh, to reduce a person's assets to the Medicaid level. Medicaid this year, in 2013, allows a person in New York State to have $14,400. If you have more than that, it is a very simple matter of simply transferring or gifting that money um, to another person or into a trust or, or whatever is convenient for you. Um, and you can be immediately eligible for community Medicaid. There are no penalties for transferring assets. Almost anyone that hears that for the first time is shocked, but it's been that way in New York since 1989. Um, a lot of other states, and I emphasize we're only talking about New York, a lot of other states do have penalties for community Medicaid, and most states don't have much in the way of services in the community. But New York can provide as much as 24-hour a day home health care uh, seven days a week. And in order to qualify, you simply have to get your assets down to $14,400. I will also hear people say, I'm not eligible because my income is too high. Um, you are allowed $812 a month uh, in New York um, for Medicaid purposes. If you have more than that, however, it doesn't mean you're ineligible. No one was ever turned down for excess income. Having excess income simply means what Medicaid expects is that you use that excess income only for medical expenses. Um, and the $812 is for everything else. So if you have uh, $1,812, Me Medicaid will expect that you use that $1,000 for medical expenses. Uh, I always tell people, not for anything foolish, you know, like food or clothing or mortgage payments or rent payments, um, only medical expenses. We have a way around that as well, though. Uh, we can set up a, a trust with a charity. We can send your excess income to the charity, and they will use it on your behalf for any of your expenses. So when it comes to community Medicaid, I emphasize to people, we can save your assets, we can do very well, and we can provide you with care at home so that hopefully you can stay at home and not need to go to the nursing home. In another segment, I'll talk about how nursing home Medicaid works. Thank you.